Hey there, we're out in the cook shed today. I'm gonna make a, it's called Chicken Pacific. Don't ask me why, but I found it in one of those old cookbooks and I made it a couple of weeks ago. And y'all, I think that's my absolute favorite way to make chicken. It was easy, it, it fit all my criteria. It was easy, it don't cost a lot, and I had everything. So, and it don't take a whole lot of time, that's four. So it really did it. Now, we were out all day, or I was, all day outside planting flowers, okay? It's springtime and I have the fever really bad. Every spring, I find something to move, to plant, to divide, to do something. And out here in front of my cook shed, I started it last fall and I, I started the bed because I've just, I've had it. I'm going to make me a flower bed right here in, by, in front of the fifth wheel, between the fifth wheel and the cook shed so I can see it all the time. And I started last fall and I put a few little pieces in it. And the last couple of days, I have really tried to fill it in. I'd, I'd go to one bed and get something. I went to another bed and got something. Went to the front and got something. And I think it's going to be really pretty come summer. I keep fingers crossed, but I think it's going to be really pretty come summer. And we built crab traps. Now, Randy did, you know, Randy and I both do that. We were cutting wire today because we're trying to really put a push on so we have a little extra money so we can do some garden um, additions, I guess. We're gonna try something new this year. I mean, we're gonna have our regular rows, but we're also gonna try trellising. And so we're gonna get to that and that'll be another video. But today we're gonna have Pacific chicken. Okay, I know this doesn't look like very much, so I hope I got everything. I'm pretty sure I do. You're gonna need some corn flakes. Just plain old cheap, I don't care what brand, corn flakes. And what we're gonna do is crunch them. And in a minute, I'll show you how to do that because that's the easiest thing in the world to crunch up and make a corn flake meal out of corn flakes. Anyway, so there's the corn flakes and there's my corn flake meal. A half a stick of butter, we're not gonna use all that. We only need a half a stick, some salt, some tarragon, some thyme, some paprika, and some garlic powder. This is two unusually large chicken breasts. I, <laughs> they're big. I've got lunch, dinner, and probably dinner tomorrow night in here, but we're gonna I'm gonna make tenderloins out of it and sour cream. And then we're gonna top, I'm gonna have butter noodles on the side. So there's my noodles, my white egg noodles for the side dish. That's it. All right, we're gonna get started with the mix, the chicken mixture, the batter mixture. Okay, that's two cups of sour cream. Just, and we're gonna put it up. Oh, you know what, let's get it over here where you can see it. And we're gonna put that in this nice little mixing bowl I got from Parmadu. Right. And then we're just going to start at this end and work our way all the way down. Okay, it's one teaspoon of everything. So it's one teaspoon of garlic powder. One teaspoon of paprika. Got a little in there still. Okay. One teaspoon of thyme. One teaspoon of tarragon. Now, if you don't have tarragon, I'm sure you could swap that out for rosemary and it would be just as good, if not better. One teaspoon of salt. Just like that. We're gonna give that a good mix. And 
Make sure it's all nice and combined. All right, now that I've got it good and mixed up, or I thought I did, those little paprika stuck together. Let's, there we go. Okay, now I need to take half of this out of this bowl and save it for later. Because we're going to warm that up to have extra sauce on our chicken. All right, but that's about half. Now we're going to set that aside. Oops. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to lay these monster chicken breasts out. Uh, I'm going to wipe my hands. <laughs> All right. Now I'm gonna just make tenderloins out of these. I could actually just do it just like this and that's perfectly fine too, but they'll cook faster and I'm hungry and it's getting late and y'all, it is raining. I am tickled to death because I did all that planning today and I didn't water it because we were supposed to get this rain. Now we were supposed to get rain last night and it never showed up, but now it is raining. Let's get this chicken done. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is I'm just absolutely just making little, just little tenderloins. I'm gonna just make strips so that they're nice and thin. That looks good enough for me. Oh, uh, that's got a little. There we go. Now, well, maybe it's not enough for two days, huh? Maybe it will be just enough for today and lunch tomorrow. We'll see. I just made little tenderloins. Make that chicken breast go a lot further. I just, well, that one's probably a good enough chicken strip, but this one's pretty long. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that in half so that they're all kind of about the same size. It's nothing fancy. You don't have to get all crazy. Just cut it into nice size pieces. All right, now I'm gonna move the chicken out of the way just sit it there. All right, and then I'm gonna show you how I do this, how I make a meal out of cornflakes. I just put it in a Ziploc bag and then just take my rolling pin and just roll away. Now I'd already done it, but then Randy said I probably needed to show you how I did that. And you can put it in a food processor or a blender. It really doesn't matter as long as you just Make it where it'll stick to that chicken. That's all you're looking for. All right, now we're gonna take this half a stick of butter that I needed, and I'm gonna unceremoniously drop it right on into a nine by 13. And I'm gonna take that nine by 13 and put it in the oven on 350 degrees and let that butter melt. While the butter's melting, then we'll get the chicken ready and then we'll bring it back out. Now let's get started on battering our chicken. And bring my chicken back over here where you can see it. Put my corn flakes in this little flat tray. Y'all didn't see that, did you? <laughs> where it fell out all over the floor and I got something else to clean up. Okay, we have our mixture here. Let's move that butter. We are going to use that butter on the noodles later, but right now I'm done with it. Now we're just going to take those stuffed chicken, dip it right in to that sour cream mixture, come over here, 
and cover it. with our cornflakes and then I'm just going to set it aside since my pan is still in the oven. While I'm doing that, I'm going to tell you, well, I told you earlier that I had made this a couple weeks ago and I had never made it before, but this really is my, this is so good. That chicken comes out so tender and randy really really enjoyed it last time so when i asked him today if he'd like to have it again he was like oh yes most definitely and we can do a video so i was like okay this is one to absolutely show in a video it is so good and it's not super expensive you know i mean it's really other than the seasonings, the actual ingredients are chicken, sour cream, and cornflakes. I mean, how cheap can you get? And, oh, it just, you'll be amazed at the flavor. Now look at that, I was down to the wire on my cornflakes. Just enough for that last piece. All right, now let's get this out of the way. Okay, my butter's melted. And that's all I needed to do was just melt that butter. And we're going to lay this in here, single file, if I have to make two batches, and I will. That was, I mean, that is a lot for two chicken breasts, y'all. That was some kind of hormone enriched something, something. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to have to have two batches. Because you do want them in a single layer. In the oven they go. Okay, in we go. Now, about 20 minutes, no more than 30. What you'll need to do is just pierce that chicken and when the juices run clear, it's done. Okay, I know my chicken is gonna take between 20 and 30 minutes and so is my pasta. So I'm gonna get that started now since my Chicken's in the oven. We're gonna get that pasta ready, or my egg noodles. So I have about two quarts of water in there. I'm gonna put an ample amount of salt. All right, lid on, gonna wait for that to boil. I'm not watching, cause a watch pot never boils. My water is boiling really good now. And I'm just going to put about two cups of dry pasta in here. About like that. Now that I've dropped my pasta, I'm going to give it a stir and make sure none of it's sticking together. I'm going to set that lid back askew on there, which means I'm leaving that much room so that it doesn't boil and bubble over. And it'll be about 12 minutes. Here we go. Our chicken is ready. All we have to do is wait for the pasta. We're going to get these out, get these on a platter. Get my next set in. Don't they look wonderful? Okay, 
Okay, now my pasta is done and we're gonna get that drained and then we'll be right back. Now that my pasta is drained, I'm gonna put that pot back on the stove. I'm gonna take that half, a, or not quite a half a stick of butter, and put that in there and let it melt and get warm. And then I'm gonna put that pasta right back in the pot so that it stays nice and hot. Gonna turn the eye off, put that lid on. Right, we're gonna check on that. See, we got just a little bubble going on. That's really all I need. Check it, make sure it's not sticking. Gonna put the lid back on that. Turn the eye off. Here you are. Here I am. Yep. Taste test. Tammy loves for me to do the taste test. I do. Why? Because you need somebody to let you know that it really is as good as I say it is. Yeah. Sorry, I turned my... It's called validation that's the word yeah anyway guys i'm gonna tell you that this is like totally good mm -hmm. that sauce is off the chain you can use that or probably on just about anything right you probably could you probably could use that sauce like on, on i would think you could use it like a pork on, loin or or, or beef or a, a beef roast or something like that i mean i'm just saying it's kind of because almost kind of reminds me of a horseradish sauce in a way. Mm, yeah, it does. It Except, kind of, but that's what I would use on a beef is horseradish sauce of mm. some kind. But this one is really good. You could use it absolutely on pork. Yeah, she made this a couple weeks ago and gave it to me. She says, well, if it's worthy, we'll make a video on it. Yeah. Well, I ate it and I said, wow. I said, I could have made a video on this. Yeah. You know, I said, we're not going to be able to have it for another two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. And it's been about two, three weeks so we get to have it again. Yeah, we get to have it I'm again. I'm excited. Because yeah, I really do love that chicken. And it is tender. Mm -hmm. It really did turn out tender. And that sauce is just like, it just makes all the difference in the world. That's all I can say. Yeah, it does. It is so good. And it's so easy. I mean, that's a that's a under an hour dinner from start to finish. And if you made it a couple times, it'd be quick. Yeah. Yeah, because you already have you, you already know what you're doing, and you're on your way. Always less than an hour. Yeah. Do you have any more of that sauce? Yes. Yeah, I don't sure. want it right now, but I'm just saying, when I get done with what I got on my plate, I'm going to want some. He is an extra sauce, extra butter, extra pepper, extra kind of guy. I like extra blue cheese with my oh, chicken. Oh, and extra too. blue cheese too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Extra, extra. Okay, I guess I'll stop. You guys have a good evening. See you in the next video. Like, subscribe, share, buy me a coffee. We'd really appreciate yep. it. See you next time. Bye. Yep.